you know, if you get a bunch of youth ministers together and uh, you ask them, invite them into a place where they feel it's, uh, they have permission to whine, you're going to get a couple of the usual suspects that pop up every single time in every single group. And one of them that I've heard, and I know you've heard, is I did not get called into ministry to do politics. I can take care of the kids. I can love and minister to them. I am not doing the politics. What do you say to somebody when they come to you with that kind of a complaint? It reminds me of uh, an old story that I'll bet you know. There's a guy stranded on a desert island for years, and he finally gets rescued. You know this story? And the rescuers come, and, and they see that he's built these three shelters. And they ask him, what are these three shelters? And he says, this first one, that's my, that's my house. That's where I live. And this, I said, well, what's that second one? Well, that's my church. That's where I worship. Well, what's that third one? He said, well, that's the church I used to go to. <laughs> well, it, it sometimes doesn't even take more than one person to have church politics. And um, you put humans together, politics is simply the process by which things get done. And we can play politics poorly or we can play it well, but we're going to play but this naive idea that somehow we can fold our arms and say, I don't play church politics, um, is one of the reasons why most youth ministries are vastly under-resourced. Because um, they don't want to do the hard work often of talking to the people that are necessary to move projects forward. In, in every uh, congregation, there is a process, often a secret process, for things getting done. If something is going to get approved, it doesn't just have to go to the appropriate committees as it's outlined in the policy and procedure manual. It has to go to Bob Johnson, who um, is the one who, if Bob nods, everybody else nods. There's, there are those people in the church. And often, instead of just learning the process and working the process and going to Bob and saying, Bob, I need your help. Bob feels honored, you get the wisdom you need and the support you need, things move forward. We say, I don't play church politics. The, the metaphor I like to use for that is um, I'm, I, I'm excited about my boxing career and I, uh, I get my shiny shorts on and my jacket, mark the marauder, I'm going to go have this big boxing event, at center ring. And I step into the rain. The crowd is going wild. I love it. I'm working the crowd. I'm waving. The crowd loves me. I'm, I'm showing them my moves. It's awesome. Everybody loves me. I love them. It's great. Until I look across the ring, and there's Mike Tyson. And Mike Tyson does not look happy. And I suddenly say to myself, I don't play boxing games. And the bell rings. And you know what happens when the bell rings. I'm knocked out. Now, I can say all day long that I don't play church politics, but the truth is I'm in the ring. And if we're going to be a part of a church community, we're going to play, and we can play poorly or we can play well, but we're going to play. But I think it's time for us to give up this sort of uh, ridiculous notion that somehow we can be a leader in the church and not be involved in politics.